go all the way around the outside of the paper. So you really have got that stretch. And then I want you to air draw the vase itself. I'm hoping from what you did last week that maybe you also kind of made some decisions about which one you think will be the most interesting for you to draw. It has a lot of things in it that we're going to be doing. There's some shading going on, on the side here, which lots of detail, which you're going to be working on today, and just the symmetry. It's kind of nice to have an example done by a professional artist. Is yours going to be vertical? Is it going to be horizontal? How big? Which pot you want to do? Focal points. Emphasis. Does that sound familiar to you? We talked about it last week. We talked about it last week. Okay. In your still life drawing, you want your blue and white plot to be the focal point. When you look at this painting by Sargent, you close your eyes, open it, what's the first thing you see? What's the focal point for you in this painting? So that? The girl that's on the floor. Me too. The girl that's on the floor. I need to open your journals right now. is to let you know what we're doing for this project. In that checklist, uh, I've underlined some important words. I'm, I've written for you create emphasis, so I hope you can really remember that's the important part. This is that word up here on our list of the principles of design. Jill? Really understanding the purpose of assessment has eluded me for a long time. It's really only been the past few years that I feel I really have a strong understanding of it. And that's because of the course I took through the Main Arts Assessment Initiative. It was designed just for visual arts teachers. And it was is also designed so that I could delve, explore, research, um, be an adult learner, and control my own learning pretty much where I wanted to go. It's made me be able to create tools that are appropriate for the learning that I need to assess. Seeing children once a week for 40 minutes it's very much about exploration and getting familiar with tools, materials, media, and process. So I like to use a checklist. It's so appropriate for younger children. They can self-assess. They know if they um, used scissors. They know if they used glue. They know if they didn't. And so I'm just asking them to reflect at the end of a unit, did you do it? Did you not do it? And my objectives are included in the rubric, the different materials and processes, techniques that I want them to use. But it's basically, did they do it? Did they not do it? As they move up a little bit, it may be all of the time, some of the time, frequency included on in a rating scale. Then I will work into reflections where I'm asking students to think a little harder when I get into third grade, second grade, about what they did, why did they do it, um, and maybe filling in some answers or some multiple choice questions. I used a very simple rating scale rubric, but it wasn't enough. Did the student uh, have neat edges in the weaving, yes or no? Well, they could, they needed something that fine-tuned a little bit more. All of the time, some of the time, none of the time, maybe. But I was finding other things about color and design that I needed a more sophisticated tool. And so from that, I've started developing rubrics and have great respect for rubrics now. We just did a um, project with um, the kids with ceramics and they made um, Chinese temples. And I thought it was fantastic the way the art room dovetailed with our new Learning Commons um, setup. During their Learning Commons time, type up an artist statement on Google Drive and the idea was that the kids were going to reflect on their process and they were finished and they were going to ask like what inspired them to do this and um, what steps did they go through in order to finish this project and um, what did they like about what they learned and what how did they change as learners and he inspires them to think not just about you know how did I do what I did um, but how did I feel as I was doing it and how did this change me. Mr. McPherson always gives us um, these sort of papers that we're rating ourselves he gives us like one, two, three, or four. And some of them are just like to look back, which is what he usually gives us. And I think they're really cool because um, a lot of the things are really very easy to answer. But another thing is you get to just do like a quick sketch of your project. So I think that's very fun. I would also say that when you're thinking about assessment, um, those two areas are also very closely linked. I mean, you actually have real uh, products to use in an art class, and um, the same type of assessment tools that you'd be using in a writing environment, you can use very similarly in an art environment. And so what we've seen 
um, Brian do in this school, for example, is begin to use um, learning progressions for students' work. And that's exactly what we're teaching in writing. It's exactly what we're teaching in reading. And we're moving in that same direction in math and in other subject areas as well. If you were to go into one of um, our art classes, you could see students working on their own learning progression. I happen to have a sample um, right here for a recent project that Brian was doing on um, Chinese architecture. And he did some unique things there, really developing engagement for students by um, giving these taglines of developing architect, seasoned architect, and career architect. And if you were to look at one of my writing learning progressions right alongside it, it's the same basic format. Your good teaching is good teaching, and good assessment is good assessment. Just like I would expect my students to be keeping writing journals, um, our students here at the school are also keeping art journals. In fact, when they're doing their own self-assessment of their work, one of the clues that he gives to kids is to go back to their journals. Um, you know, reflect back on some of the planning that we've done leading up to your final project and use that as a reminder of the progression that you've made towards your um, final outcomes. It's a nice way to um, incorporate, you know, formative instruction, formative assessment. You know, you're never finished with a project in Brian's class, I think. You've just kind of done the final step. Um, and he is always encouraging kids to go back and revise and edit and to encourage them to think more and, and more creatively. You know, three times a year you get a report card, and on that report card we have these standards listed. I want you to think about as I read through these, which areas we're going to be focusing on today. Recognizing connection in works, artworks, world cultures, and periods. We're going from these tiny little drawings you did last week, your little thumbnail sketches, your three-minute sketches, to this big piece of paper. And, you know, moving your hand a little bit versus moving your hand a lot, it takes a little bit of warming up and a little bit of practice to do that. This is Reagan's piece. You used then the Sharpie marker and you started. When you're ready to start your sketch, start your sketch. If you need to be like Reagan, you can draw it 12 times. I don't care. But just get comfortable with it. We're not going to be erasing right now. Get used to not erasing. And then when you feel you're ready, switch over to the front side. Another one right now, just make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Draw as well that your voices just go silent. With discipline-based art education, the, four, the emphasis being in four different disciplines of the visual arts, um, it really got me to think, okay, it isn't all just about production. It's also about criticizing artwork, being able to analyze it. It is also about making connections with art history. Uh, it's also making those connections about aesthetics and why art and what is art. And from that point on, in the mid-80s, I really have felt it's essential that every unit I do have those four components in it. And it's made it, my teacher much richer. It's uh, given me a bit of a skeleton and a structure on which to build my units. Standard-based curriculum, I think it really helps because the students have a very clear sense of what is expected. It's not mysterious. It's not, oh, I have to be such a, an amazing artist. They're just checking off the boxes and making sure they're doing each task and they can do it every time. You know, the confidence to move forward um, and feel like they can accomplish things uh, with their hands and visually. And so at the international school I was uh, teaching in in Frankfurt, we were starting to adopt some of the American standards as uh, important parts of our curriculum. I always thought of it as a guideline, sort of following what discipline-based art education had done but giving some more meat to it and more directions and maybe um, clear expectations about how they could be adapted for school as opposed to just theory. I feel I'm fortunate to be in the district I'm in where we are encouraged to really analyze the standards, see what they really mean, unpack them, if you will, with our students and ourselves, and that um, Using that as just a skeleton, I don't find it something too rigid that it's, 
it doesn't work for me, I can adapt it, things are open-ended enough. It's saying students are using a media or students show literacy in a discipline and understanding. It's not they must be able to draw a, a line without using a straight line without using a ruler. Um, it's conceptual things. So I, I find the standards continue to be a good guideline. It helps us explain what our curriculum is, the value of the arts to um, other people is a good advocacy piece. Things change over time and things will continue to change. I haven't gotten married to any of these standards because I know they will change. Um, I've done some analysis in my work with the main arts assessment of looking at national standards, looking at state standards, looking at the new national core standards, and really finding a lot of parallels between the two. I love to get inside the artist's head, and he's really asking the kids to do that important work of, well, what do you think, and what matters to you about this project? And that's what takes it from a really cool project that Brian's doing to a really cool project that the kids did. You know, it takes it out of, um, it's not teacher-centered anymore, it's student-centered. And then he also gives them the tools to figure out for themselves where they are and what they need to do next. There's a um, real, really strong sense of independence in the art room. What they need to do is do it. They just need to you know, take themselves through the process and everybody doesn't have to be at the same place in the process on every, um, any given day, but they need to know where they're at and what is going to come next. And he does a beautiful job of um, creating the scaffolding. When he teaches, he says a direction and we all interpret it in different ways. So that's what makes our artwork different. Well, in, when we were doing our Chinese architecture buildings, I had a detail that was underneath my roof, but it didn't end up working. So I ended up um, pressing, cutting out the windows. So uh, by taking away a detail, Mr. McPherson thought it was a good idea if I added another thing. I feel it's important that skills are reintroduced again and again, materials, media, and process, so that students can build on their experience, build on what they know. I also believe it's important for them to have time to explore. I can say, well, you remember last year when we did that unit on shading? It's going to apply to what we're doing this year when we start to use the watercolor and put shadows on the edge of the vase. To reintroduce Return to is such an important part of learning. We know about scaffolding learning. We know about meeting students where they are. I'm always aware of that continuum. When I look at curriculum, when I look at standards, I know they're in bands developmentally. Um, and I know that it is a continuum. So uh, as we're hearing more and more about proficiency-based learning right now, I can't help but think that the, what I'm doing really feeds into that system. So it's important. I'm looking at the standards, making sure I'm making connections with other cultures, um, getting students to talk about art, getting to understand what the standards are, because it does feed into that. I think it's an important part of the creative process, uh, the problem solving, that once it's complete, taking that time to reflect and look at it. In the reflections, I have them right at the end of the unit. I usually have a couple um, where they have to think a little bit more, what was the most successful part of this project? And, uh, or what didn't work? Or how could you change something? And I think it helps them, if they do that writing, to access different parts of their brain, to sit back, reflect, think about, oh, yeah, not just I like it, but why do I like it? What is it about it that worked? Or what didn't work? How can I improve it? And being able to analyze that, certainly a high level thinking, but it also helps them move forward and appreciate other people's work as well. Put up exemplary work um, so that as students come into the room, they first of all can check the board and have an idea of what they might be doing that particular day. They can also see the best work of other students and that I find they feel is empowering and inspiring. I got involved with the main arts assessment initiative because I was feeling kind of alone coming back from overseas never having lived in Maine and when I took a course on arts assessment that was offered because of the Maine Arts Assessment Initiative, I was so excited. It was just about art. It wasn't trying to adapt 
assessment for science or math, it was assessment for visual arts in particular. It's been a great network for me, a great way to meet other people that are equally enthusiastic about um, education, arts education, and it's a peer group now that I really enjoy working with, working for, and just exposing me to what's really happening in the visual arts and education in Maine. I've been really proud, pleased, happy, excited, thrilled to be a part of the Maine Arts Assessment on, on many levels. Um, but first of all, the camaraderie, the collegiality, the connection with other people that are in the same line of work that I am. Being the only art teacher in one building can be rather isolating. The Maine Arts Assessment Initiative has provided other opportunities for me to um, learn from others and also share my learning. And this year I presented a workshop, and I'll be presenting it a couple more times. And it really is about my journey, my personal professional growth, um, and most recent growth, and that really has been around assessment. I think anytime we can make those connections with what students know, where they are, it makes their learning that much richer. I say when they come to the art class, they're sort of pre-taught and that makes my job a lot easier. It makes uh, the lesson much richer. Um, we're trying to teach our 21st century learners to learn, to create, to show what they know. Um, and we do that in a wide variety of ways. Um, I'll collaborate with the art teacher and we've done that recently with the Chinese architecture and we created an environment where the students could come here to do the research and they would get their art instruction in the art room, come here, do the research to kind of to pull the pieces together. And through that process as they took sketches of, looked at different things, collected sketches, made sketches of the buildings, they processed it, synthesized it, made composite drawings. The composite drawings um, were then turned into templates. The templates were turned into clay pieces. That that whole process is important that they understand it. And reflecting at the end with a rubric, with some written questions. And also I'm having them do an artist statement. Um, they interact with at least two people talking with, uh, with someone about their art and these written statements will help them. We have a display in our learning commons and we're having an opening reception so we can invite parents in and families to be with their children so they can really appreciate um, what the students have done. What I do in art provides the students with authentic experiences working the way artists work. You could see they're really, really impressed that he went down to Boston, he went to the Museum of Fine Arts, he has this print and he can tell you that he told the kids that the print was 84 inches by 84 inches, seven feet long and seven feet tall. And you could see in their faces that, wow, our teacher really knows a lot about art and he actually saw this painting. And for kids who live in tops of Maine, that, that's impressive. You know, that uh, This project really uh, and kind of inspired me because in art class we uh, he usually brings the culture to us. It's pretty cool when he brings in pictures that of things that he's done in his life and it makes you kind of think that he's done a lot with his life. Gong Yifai Choi, Chinese New Year's Eve today in celebration of our Chinese um, art theme. Um, you should all be very proud of these fifth graders. They have been working their hearts out we started this project back in September and finished it last week pretty much.